So here I have the latest action cameras, the Action 4, the GoPro 12, the Go 3 X3 and the latest release from Insta360, the Ace Pro. And in today's video, we're taking a look at the differences between these cameras to find out which has the best bang for the buck. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of which camera to get for your activities. This video is not paid or sponsored by any of the companies, so I'll be sharing the pros and cons and the unfiltered truth about these cameras. I also have an in-depth review of each camera which you can find down below in case you want to dive a little bit deeper into one specific camera. Now, when you're looking into buying a new action camera or you want to buy an action camera for the first time, it's really hard to decide which one to get since most of these are now sitting in the same price range at around $400 to $450. And when a new camera is released, there's also a higher chance that you'll end up in the pit of sponsored videos. And of course, you see all the people using these cameras in different ways, which has a huge impact on your buying decision. So before you decide, you have to consider your use cases and not only go for the camera which has the best hyped out promo video. So regardless of how good or bad the image quality is coming from these cameras, you should always go for the one that you like the most. And all these cameras are more than good enough for what you'll end up using them for anyway, it's just that some have more features, one is smaller, and one shoots 360 videos and so on. But hopefully by the end of this video, I'll help you make a better decision based on what you want and need in a camera. Personally, I want a camera that works 10 out of 10 times, is fun to use and gives me that extra wow feeling when I'm out shooting videos. And now that I've been able to use these cameras for a longer time, the question always starts with image quality. And between all these cameras, there is a difference in image quality. The Ace Pro does now have the highest resolution at 8K up to 24 FPS, followed by the GoPro 12 at 5.3K up to 60 FPS. Whether or not there's a huge difference between these two cameras is hard to tell, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Even though the X3 has a resolution of 5.7K, this is spread throughout a 360 degree field of view and the final export after reframing the 360 footage will look similar to 2.7K when exported in ProRes at 4K resolution using the Insta360 Studio app. Now, the Action 4 does only shoot 4K videos up to 120 FPS, but has a 1 over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor, which gives you that extra punch in low light. The Go 3 is limited to 2.7K resolution at 30 FPS, but does also have free frame videos at 1440p up to 50 FPS. And that includes features like horizon lock and adjustable aspects in post, which allows you to export the same clip in different aspects with the tap of a button. It's also the smallest and lightest camera weighing only 35 grams. Now putting a few of these cameras side by side here, it's really easy to see the difference, especially if you're familiar with the look that these cameras give. But if you're all new to this, it might be harder. And if you watch five different videos on five different days, you might not be able to see the difference at all. But at the end, these cameras are only a tool to share our experience. So it doesn't really matter which one you get, as long as you pick the one you want. But on paper, the Ace Pro is now the winner because of the high resolution coming straight out of the camera. But even though a lot of people crave for higher resolution, it's not really something you need. At the end, you'll have to create a compelling story or a video that people want to watch. And people won't be watching a video just because it's shot in 8K or HDR. And looking at the differences between the Hero 10, 11, and 12, for example, there's not much difference at all using the standard video and the natural color profile. So if you're looking to get a new action camera, don't decide it based on the resolution, but rather the versatility, ease of use, and whether or not the camera will add something different when you're out shooting. Which will benefit you the most, which has the better price, and which one will give you the best bang for the buck. Now let's talk about low light. Even though the Action 4 has amazing low light capabilities, it seems like it applies to a limited use cases, and I feel it works best sitting still on a tripod. I also found that the D-Log M color profile in low light with manual settings gives a much better result than the low light enhancement feature itself. The same thing goes for the Hero 12, but this has no option for low light at all, and the stabilization is far off. Even when doing a walk through the forest during the day, the GoPro Hero 12 seems to struggle a lot. When it comes to the Go 3 though, I was expecting this to be the worst of them all because of the lower resolution and the fact that it's not meant for low light at all. But 
to my surprise, it actually performed pretty good when using the pendants and walking around. The X3, however, is not really a camera I use in low light, it's mainly when I ride my bike, but since this is a huge area of how I create videos here as well, it's interesting to see how the X3 outperforms both the Action 4 and the GoPro Hero 12. The quality is not as good though, but I'll take a perfect stabilized shot any day, and with some minor adjustments in post, it turned out pretty good. But the Ace Pro takes low light videos to new heights and I would take it as far and say this is the new king of low light. Because of the new 5 nanometer AI chip, the Ace Pro fills the gaps of missing pixels when shooting in low light and adds more denoising in real time, which means stabilization gets much better. And actively using these cameras for a longer time, the question is always, will the camera overheat? And the short answer is no. When you're using an action camera, regardless of brand, you will most likely use it out outdoors, either on a selfie stick, a car, a motorcycle, or in a way that provides some sort of airflow to the camera, which will help the camera cool down and significantly decrease the chance of overheating. But just to show you a quick comparison here, here's a battery test done in 25 degrees Celsius and no airflow. All cameras are set to the highest resolution with the same settings as bitrate, stabilization, and so on. Even though I hate doing these tests, and I honestly think it makes no sense because as soon as you add some airflow, flow to these cameras, they will run at least 40 plus minutes. But it's nice to see how technology evolves and I mean, the Go 3 is such a small camera but still delivers when it comes to runtime. Now one thing to note though is when it comes to recording videos with these cameras is that the Insta360 cameras saves a video for each 30 minute clip. So you might end up with one or two clips from the same video. Now the Ace Pro is also the latest action camera being released and after using it for some time now, I'm actually pretty impressed with the performance and quality. I haven't really experienced any issues at all, but I would say it's pretty early to say since I only had it for a couple of weeks. And in my previous video, I also mentioned that I was extremely satisfied with the GoPro Hero 12, for example, but that I felt I was waiting for something to happen. And little did I know, 30% of all my shots ended up looking like this. So honestly, I was expecting a whole lot more from GoPro, and it's safe to say that GoPro 12 is my least favorite camera after this trip. It's it's just not reliable enough. So if I should recommend a GoPro, it would probably be the Hero 10. This has the same GP2 processor as the Hero 12 without the unnecessary things which will just make the camera work harder and fail faster. And moving over to DJI, the Action 4 has that optimized 1 over 1.3 inch SEMA sensor with a responsive touchscreen on the back as well as the front. The menu navigation is also a lot cleaner on the Action 4 and you have everything you need in one place by swiping to the left on the main screen. It can also shoot vertical videos like the GoPro and the Ace Pro, but it requires that you hold or mount it in a vertical position with the included cage. Even though the GoPro has a built-in function for changing aspect, you still have to go through the settings and manually change this to vertical or horizontal if you're not using the 8x7 aspect. And talking about mounting options, even though I quite like action cameras that has this quarter inch screw on the bottom like the GoPro Hero 12, but when I'm using the Action 4, I really do appreciate how fast and snappy the magnetic mounting system is. And then we have the Go 3, which I've been using for more than six months now. And just being able to use the Go 3 and the Action Pod as two separate devices is pretty awesome and has been a huge advantage when I'm out doing hikes. It's the perfect camera for traveling and when you do things with your family where you don't want to bring bulky equipment or if you just prefer hands free shooting. Also, another question I get asked a lot is how many hours can the Go 3 128 gigabyte version record for? And it's pretty impressive that this can actually shoot almost six hours of video, which is more than what you get with a 128 or even 256 micro SD card with these other cameras shooting in 4K. It is though, however, the camera with the lowest resolution at 2.7K, which is almost three times lower than the Ace Pro. But for me, it really comes down to reliability and with some adjustments here and there, the footage coming from the Go 3 actually looks pretty good. The Go 3 is also made to capture those moments of fun, which you know normally wouldn't be able to capture with a bigger camera. And honestly, the past few months, I've had such a great time with the Go 3, taking me through Hawaii, both above and below water. And in my long-term review, I also said that this could just as well be my main travel camera, and I still stand by that. It's an amazing tiny camera that will only get better. It's now also available in the color black, so you can get more of that subtle look. 
Now, which of these cameras do I think is the most versatile one? I mean, GoPro states that they have the world's most versatile camera, and I think I mentioned this in my previous video comparison as well. I mean, it's shooting straightforward and has the same mounting system as the other cameras, but the Action 4 has a magnetic quick lock system out of the box with easy options for horizontal and vertical aspects. And mounting or changing the camera from one mount to another one is definitely easier and faster on the Action for without buying additional accessories. And the Ace Pro has now the highest resolution of 8K as well as a free frame video mode for multiple aspects. It also has gesture control, pure video for low light and the same type of magnetic mounting system as the Action 4 but it's a little bit different. So already there the Action 4 and the Ace Pro is more versatile than the GoPro. Of course the Hero 12 has features that impress like 10 bit in all profiles and the option to select aspects before you record or you can shoot video in 8x7 and later crop the footage in post, but it's not enough to make it the most versatile action camera. The Go 3 for example only shoots videos at 2.7k at its highest which is more than what most people need. It's also the smallest of them all and offers a free frame video mode where all the settings like aspect, frame rate, stabilization and more can be changed in post. It also has a magnetic backplate and a magnetic quick lock system like the Action 4 and the Ace Pro where the accessory or the actual mount has an additional core range mounting option offering a wider option of where you can place it. So even the Go 3 is more versatile than the GoPro Hero 12. The Insta360 X3 though records the 360 videos at 5.7k which you later reframe in the studio or a mobile app. And this is the camera that gives you the most freedom because it shoots 360 videos. And because of that it's also the most versatile camera in my opinion. It has the same mounting options as the other cameras but without the magnetic quick lock system. However, Insta360 offers a fast and secure quick lock system themselves which I am a huge fan of. I use these with my X3 as well as my GoPro and it makes it so much faster. And since the X3 shoots 360 videos you can change the aspect to whatever you like and even create some amazing effects which you cannot do with any of the other cameras. So that's also something to consider what type of camera do you want. Do you want a camera with endless options? Options that helps you become more creative or do you prefer a regular straightforward shooting action camera? I also think Insta360 has a sale on the X3 right now so make sure to check it out down in the description below. So what's my honest opinion about these cameras after using them for a long long time now? Which one do I prefer and why? To be honest the X3 is amazing. I know it's a little bit on the lower end when it comes to quality but I also think a lot of people are too obsessed with resolution. But for me, I would trade the high resolution any day to be able to just hold the camera in one position and then later reframe how I want is so much fun and it's convenient. And I would say the invisible selfie stick is the biggest reason to get the X3. It creates this amazing look and if you use it properly, it looks like you have a mini drone following you. It's just amazing how this works and you can literally just point it wherever you want and you don't have to think about anything. So to me, this is the camera that adds the best bang for the buck. But we still have the Action 4 and I still think this is the most robust action camera you can get. But it's also the camera with the least amount of features both in and outside of the app. The biggest advantage of the Action 4 for me though is that D-Log-M color profile which is both easy to grade and it looks amazing. And we also have the Ace Pro which is what I consider my next main action camera and this has already replaced my Hero 12 which means the Hero 12 is already at the bottom. The 8K looks amazing on the Ace Pro and to have gesture control and free frame at 4K up to 60 FPS, I mean that's everything I need basically. And not to mention the little one, the Go 3, it's more or less the Ace Pro without the 8K, 4K and clarity zoom even though it shoots in 2.7K only, I mean the footage looks amazing so I would also grab this over the GoPro if I had to pick one. So it's a tough decision, but if I should rank these cameras from uh, one to five, the GoPro would probably end on fifth place. It's just not reliable enough and I still feel like it's a rushed product. On fourth place, I would put the Action 4. Like I said, it's the most durable action camera on the market, but since I don't do action sports like cross bike, rally, cliff jumping with a snowboard and you name it, I feel like the Action 4 is a little bit boring. It has amazing image quality though, so it's not 
that is just limited in terms of what you can create. On third place, I would put the Ace Pro with its 8K sensor, 4K clarity zoom, and pure video for a low light. I mean, this is the best low light action camera on the market right now, and it also has all the features you might or might not want to use, but at least they are there, so if you want to check them out, you have them. And for vlogging or framing your shots better, the flip screen is a huge advantage for my personal use. In the first and second place, I would say both the X3 and the Go3 wins this one. In my previous in-depth comparison, I hadn't had the chance to travel with the Go3, but now after a few weeks in Hawaii, I'm blown away with the ease of use and the quality coming from the Go3. The action pod has been a game changer for framing my shots when I'm out traveling with the Go3 and have it mounted to my hat, and even underwater, it performs extremely good. The small size allows me to mount it anywhere without any accessories, and it's also the camera with the longest record time. As for the X3, I think I've said it too many times already, but I'd pick this over any camera. It's just amazing how it works, and the footage looks amazing if you ask me. Maybe not the best quality, but the versatility is on a whole different level. So there you have my honest comparison of the X3, the Ace Pro, the Go 3, the Action 4, and the GoPro Hero 12. Which of these you're gonna get is gonna be completely up to you, but hopefully this video helped you make a better decision based on your needs. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button for the algorithm. And if you are brand new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So with that said, let me know which camera you decide to pick up or which camera that you have in the comments below.